So Texans at Patriots week three. Fortunately for us, this time around, it's not a primetime game. As you guys know, the Texans aren't good on primetime usually, most of the time. Probably 99% of the time. So that means this time we won't get embarrassed on national television. So that's a plus. Always a plus when we don't get embarrassed. So honestly, usually if it's any other team, the fact that we're coming off a 10 day break because we played on Thursday night is an advantage to us. But these are the Patriots, man. With the Patriots, these type of things don't matter. These guys are on a whole different level. So that 10 day break might help us a bit, but it's not going to make that huge of a difference, honestly. So let's look at the matchups. Their offensive line versus our defensive line. Last season in the playoffs, our defensive line dominated these guys. They really did. And that was without J.J. Watt. So with the return of J.J. Watt, I could totally see that happening again. Last season, our defense was just hitting everything that moved. They were just being physical with them. And they won. They won the battle all game until, you know, the offense messed up the game, per usual. So, I do expect our defensive line to be physical with their offensive line and win some battles this time around. Clowney, as you guys know, made Tom Brady cry in that playoff game, so... Pro that's probably going to happen again if we're being honest. So, another thing. Belichick is a coach that always takes away your best player on defense or on offense. He always does it to Watt. He always makes Watt almost unnoticeable all game. But he's never had to go up against J.J. Watt with Jadavion Clowney opposite him, so... I'm really curious to see what Belichick does to see if he can stop it. Because I honestly think the way the Chiefs beat the Patriots is early on, they were only rushing three people at them and putting eight into coverage. So maybe we can do that. Because Watt, Clowney, and Merciless are three really good pass rushers, but I don't know. Let's see what the Texans are going to plan on doing. Let's see if they take that Chiefs formula and use it to their advantage. Or let's just see if they do what they were doing last year and just hit them hard. Now, their corners versus their receivers. Our corners versus their receivers, for that matter. Their receivers are banged up and our corners are banged up. I think they only have three healthy receivers. And two of them are banged up, and that's Hogan and Dorsett. Dorsett isn't really much of an issue, but Brandon Cooks is. He's the only fully 100% healthy wide receiver they have. And then there's us with our corners that are hurt. Joseph has a shoulder injury, but he probably is going to play, and Kevin Johnson's out four to six weeks, so... It's going to be an interesting matchup. Lucky for us, Edelman's not playing. He's out for the season, so we might have an edge there. And then we got the running backs versus our linebackers. Personally, I don't think their running backs are dangerous at running the ball. I really don't. I think our front seven can stop it. But where our running backs always... Always, and I mean always, for as long as I can remember, the Patriots running backs always find a way to beat our linebackers. That's Brian Cushing, 
as Bernardrick McKinney. So this time around, Cushing is suspended. So this time we have Sat Cunningham out there. And Sat Cunningham is fast. He was probably drafted for that purpose to stop the Patriots running back thing. And we played the Patriots in the preseason and Cunningham got beat by the Patriots running backs for two touchdowns. So let's see how that goes. But I do think Cunningham honestly brings more to the table than Brian Cushing because with Brian Cushing if say Clowney or Merciless for some reason got beat to the edge by a running back with Brian Cushing there's not much he could have done. He probably would have tackled the running back for probably a 7-8 yard gain. But with Sack Cunningham that 7-8 yard gain only turned into a 1 or 2 yard gain because he's quick to the edges. He's fast so that's something good to have. Sack Cunningham can clean up a lot of bad plays that the front seven might mess up at some points. And of course they got Rob Gronkowski who is dealing with a groin injury so hopefully it limits him a bit because I don't think Eddie Pleasant's up to the task of shutting down Rob Gronkowski. The Chiefs had to use Eric Berry and Eric Berry's an all pro pro bowler and one of the best safeties in the NFL and we don't have that on our roster so who knows man. Let's see if Eddie Pleasant's up to the task of Handling Rob Gronkowski personally, I don't see it. So let's see what happens. Now our offense versus their defense. Their front seven isn't very good. Trey Flowers, High Tower are the only two players that are really worrisome on that front seven. But when you have our offensive line, any defensive line should worry you. So. Let's see what goes on there. I do personally think our offensive line should win the battle most of the time. Because with the addition of Greg Max finally back into the lineup, our offensive line is slightly better. And by starting Deshaun Watson, some of those offensive line issues are masked. Because Deshaun Watson can avoid pressure. He can run away. So... There's a slight advantage there by having Watson there. So now we look at our running backs versus their front seven. As I said, their front seven isn't all that impressive and Hightower is dealing with a knee injury. So hopefully he is out for the game, hopefully. And then we'd really have a huge advantage there because with the addition of Deontay Foreman, Lamar Miller actually looks somewhat decent and with the threat of Deshaun Watson being able to run at any given time our run game is all of a sudden better so I do think we have an advantage in the run game but as you guys know Bill Belichick always shuts your best player down some way or somehow or at least he tries to usually it works and let's see if it works here Kareem Hunt ran all over the Patriots. The Saints weren't able to do so against them because they're the Saints. So let's see if we're able to run all over them with Deontay Foreman and Lamar Miller. Personally, I do think it's possible. But we just got to use them right. We got to run Miller to the outside, run Foreman to the inside. That's how we got to do it. And now... Our wide receivers versus their DBs. We got Hopkins, Jalen Strong, Bruce Ellington, Braxton Miller versus pretty much Malcolm Butler and Stephon Gilmore. Stephon Gilmore, I think, is a great corner. I do. I think he was a great addition to their team. Huge upgrade over Logan Ryan. And. Malcolm Butler, I personally think he's overrated. And, of course, they got Devin McCourty at safety. So, I do think their unit is capable of shutting down our 
wide receivers. I do. They've done it before and they'll probably be capable of doing it again because they are improved now with Gilmore. So let's see how that goes. What they would always do to Hopkins was have Logan Ryan on him and have Devin McCourty's shadow over them. So Hopkins wouldn't be able to do anything. So it's pretty much going to be up to the other wide receivers to step up and make plays. And by other wide receivers, I pretty much I'm only looking at Bruce Ellington, honestly, because Braxton Miller sucks. They don't look at Jaden Strong's way. He hardly ever even goes in. So let's see what happens there. And our tight ends. As you guys know, Fedora would stop for the season. We were looking at Gary Barnish, but I think that flowed through. That's not happening. So now it's pretty much Ryan Griffin uh, and Steven Anderson. I like Anderson. I think Anderson's a good mismatch. So we're going to have to find a way to get Tyler Irvin and Lamar Miller the ball in the passing game. We have to find a way to get Ryan Griffin the ball and Steven Anderson the ball. We have to find a way to run the ball down their throats and hopefully be able to win. So, personally, I think this is going to be a close game. For one, the Texans have been waiting to beat the Patriots for a long time. And I think at some point it's going to happen. But, I don't think it's going to be today or this Sunday. I really don't. But, I don't think this game's going to be a blowout. I think Deshaun Watson's going to add a whole different element to it. That's going to actually make this game close for once. And, what's really going to come down to is, the Patriots are going to confuse Deshaun Watson a few times. And, he's not going to be able to move the ball in a few occasions. And, he's going to make a few mistakes. That's honestly what I think is going to happen. I think our defense is going to make Tom Brady cry again. I think this game is going to be a lot closer than most of us think. And another thing. I really liked last week how Jay Prosh and Lamar Miller were chipping the edge rushers against the Bengals. So hopefully they, they do that again this week to, so they can help out the offensive line. And that really helped them out a lot. So if the Texans are do that again, limit the Patriots pass rush, this is going to be a close game, even a possibility that the Texans can win honestly, but I don't see it happening yet because I do think the Patriots are going to be sneaky and they're going to confuse Deshaun Watson, they're going to confuse him and we're going to lose, the score, 23-17, to 17. Patriots win, so with that being said, Comment down below what you guys think the outcome of this game is going to be and make sure to like and subscribe. And I'll catch you guys later. Peace.